So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. <music> Welcome to the PowerCat Podcast, GoPowerCat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, GoPowerCat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to the PowerCat Post Game Review Podcast brought to you by Caddy Shack Golf. I am Tim Fitzgerald, publisher at GoPowerCat.com. Standing by to join us shortly is our football analyst, Brian Hanley, offensive guard on those 1997 and 98 historic K-State teams. And boy, he can fill in some blanks here about um, what life is like when a defensive lineman is going off like Felix Anyaduke Uzama did against TCU on Saturday. We've got a lot to talk about. K-State wins 31-12, to just rolls TCU. Their only touchdown in the game for the Frogs came in the final minute of the game, 15 seconds left against the reserves as Kansas State dominated both sides of the ball pretty much throughout this game and a really impressive performance by King Felix, as everyone wants to call him now. And so many players on this team had great days as Kansas State looks like it's settling in to playing some pretty good football as the Wildcats head to Lawrence. In case you missed it, that kickoff time has been announced now. Saturday night it came out. It'll be at 11 a.m. on Saturday on FS1. Caddyshack Golf, where caddy with two T's. Visit caddyshackgolf.com for all of your officially licensed golfing willy apparel, accessories, and more. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. And now I welcome in our football analyst, Mr. Brian Hanley, after Kansas State's 31-12 to victory over TCU. Even last week, we got to talk about a win, but there was so much negative, Brian, to, to sift through. There is some things we need to talk. There are some things we need to talk about with this game that didn't go as well as planned, but for the most part, this was a dominating K-State victory, and yep. uh, we have a certain defensive player we'll need to talk about a little bit, but give me your overall thoughts on how this game kind of unveiled itself at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. You know, I, I had mentioned in the, the pregame podcast that we do that I thought that the game was going to get a little bit out of hand in the second half. I thought that we would control it. It would be close. And then about midway through the third quarter, we would just kind of put the hammer down. Well, it, it I don't know if we necessarily put the hammer down, but after about the middle of the, the second quarter, Tim, I, the game wasn't really, I mean, they couldn't do anything on offense. I mean, we completely shut them down. I mean, they, they got some drives. I shouldn't say we shut them down because we had some goal line stand, but the defense played well. The offense was moving the football. It's just, I, I thought that this was about a good, a win. I believe that TCU, I didn't, I never thought I would say this, Tim. They quit. They they quit, and and I think that had a lot to do with us making them quit. It's one thing to quit, but you know when you're getting beat up and you're just literally getting beat up, we made them quit. I was proud. The guys played hard. It was a good win. Yeah, it was really hard to watch as a Gary Patterson fan. Yeah, that yeah. team's done with him, and I don't I don't yep. know how eloquently to put that but they're done you could tell they had no interest in playing for their head coach and um that's a a bad bad sign but i don't want to diminish what k-state did because you're right k-state came out hit the horn frogs right in the mouth with a touchdown drive and then uh they stopped they did stop tcu on the first drive but at some point there early in the second or first quarter i guess skylar thompson threw the interception led to three points good job defense holding them to three points. Then you have a long run that breaks down to the two-yard line, and the defense holds them out of the end zone on a four and out. It was an impressive stand by the defense, not so impressive offense by TCU. Next play, safety. If you had told me after they broke a 61-yard run to get it to the two, 
Would, do you want to play this out or give up two points right now? I'd, I'd give him the two. That's right. <laughs> Every time. So I wasn't very happy with the safety. I thought the play call was atrocious. In fact, I thought the play oh. call was exactly basically what they called at Tech that led to its safety against Kansas State. I, I guess Courtney Messingham didn't learn the lesson there. And oh. uh, But still, five points, and that's really all K-State gave up through the course of the game other than a touchdown with 15 seconds left against the number twos. Again, though, let's let's dive into some of these negatives. Third quarter, completely empty for K State. They had less than twenty yards of offense. They looked just feeble again in that third quarter offensively. And I'm just going to say it: a lot of times you you can sit here and say, "Well, the players didn't execute plays. They didn't make plays." I thought the play calling was just Melba toast, boring and atrocious. And I I sense that you might agree that sitting on the lead was okay because. TC wasn't doing anything in this game, but it made me a little nervous. Well, it was fine because they weren't doing anything, but you're 1,000% correct. I was like, what are we doing? Are we not trying to go and score more? I mean, it literally looked like we weren't trying to score any more points. I mean, with the play calling, I'm like, look, guys, at some point we have to do something. I know because all it would have taken was for them to, to hit a couple of big plays, and they were capable. If they'd hit a couple of big plays, we had zero momentum. I'm like, okay, we're just, I mean, we're sitting on the lead and that's fine. And our defense is doing its job. And again, and that's fine. I go, but anything can happen in a football game, a, a tip pass or, or a fluke play. And they're right back in it. I'm like, let's put the hammer down. And we didn't do that. Didn't do it. No, nope, absolutely not. It was a, a little bit frustrating, but then you turned it around and you saw a defense for K-State play at the kind of levels that we saw them earlier in the year. They looked very dominating. It helped that yep. TCU was missing a, a top running back, but they've got a pair of guys that they lean on pretty hard. In fact, Kendra Miller did go for 102 yards in this game. He had the 61 yards, so I, I like I like how stats work. <clears throat> he had 14 carries for 102 yards, but in reality, he had 13 carries for 41 yards. That's correct. <laughs> then he had 61 That's other correct. yards. So K-State did a remarkable job pinning up this TCU running game throughout the game. <clears throat> really, um, if you look at the overall yardage, Brian, you're you're not blown away by the defensive performance. It was ended up at, what, 340 for TCU, which is okay. Not, you know, awesome. Right. But TCU just didn't threaten that often. And when they did threaten, like we just mentioned, the defense just took over and said, you're not getting in the end zone. We're just not letting you in here. And, boy, that – Again, that, that brought me back to some of those great defenses K-State's had in the past, and maybe this crew is capable of getting there on a more consistent basis than we've seen in Big 12 play. I believe that the defense, I mean, it, 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 when we played the, it, let's just look at it this way, and I'm sorry for fumbling my words. The first three games we played against some really some good offenses. I'm not saying that we're not going to play some down the road, but those offenses were good. That offensive lines that were good. And that's a huge difference. Now, again, we're going to have some, some difficult competition coming up, but I just think that our defense is playing at a level right now with so much more confidence. And, and again, a defense is effort. And you get effort from confidence and, you know, for being able to think that you can do it and then going out and showing that you can do it. I just think that they can get to a level that's going to be very, very above average, I believe, because they're hitting, they're tackling. Clearly, they're rushing the passer. Um I just, I think, they, I think they found something with rushing the passer, and so maybe they've changed a couple of things. Well, I know they've changed a few things that they're doing in obvious passing situations. You know, like the third and nines, not necessarily the third and long, like fifteen, sixteen, or stuff like that. Kind of is what it is. But in those obvious passing situations, we figured out something, and we're stopping the run for the most part. We're stopping the run. We're doing that. So, and if we can get after your passer, the defense is just playing at a really, really high level right now. Well, what happened on Saturday with Felix and Yuduke Uzama is going to change the way everyone has to play Kansas State in the future. Yep. It, it just will. You, you can't leave a tackle trying to block this guy alone. And how TCU yep. hardly figured that out during the course of the game blows my mind. That yep. poor tackle is going to have nightmares. 
He yeah, he will. I, I mean, yeah, well, that had to be humiliating. What happened to him? That, that, that was Tim. And I don't mean to cut you off, but that that was just piss poor coaching. I Let's agree. just call it what it was. Hey, you, they literally let that kid get embarrassed, and that, I mean, either you take him out. Or you help them, but you do something. I'm right. sorry. I just had to say that. No. I apologize. I agree. Um, I know that never happened to you. Well, number one, you were a guard, so you didn't have a guy like Felix <laughs> trying to get around you. But um, I, I almost feel like old school Gary Patterson was sending a message to his player. If you can't take care of yeah. your business, I'm going to get you humiliated out here. Yeah, that, that, that was ridiculous. It just was. But Felix, King Felix, as people are now calling Ooh. him was unbelievable. And they can take the record away, which they did. I don't know if you caught that last night. Uh, the NCAA interpreted the rules differently than K-State. Honestly, K-State got it wrong. Uh, so six sacks became four sacks. Because he was too good at his job and strip sacked the quarterback <laughs> twice, the ball went forward and was recovered for zero or positive yards, thus negating the sack. If he had not forced the fumble and just had the sack, it would have been a record. It's crazy. He it was, he did too much. but uh, So right. he ended up tying the school record with four. He, he now sits at uh, 11, and the school record is uh, maybe 10, and the school record is 11 and a half. I'm losing track of all my numbers here. Uh, but he will get it over the course of these last four games. But again, everyone is going to have to account for this guy no matter where he lines up and whatever situation they're in. If they're going to throw the ball, they have a problem, don't they? Yes, they do. And it was, you know, I'm obviously I'm good friends with Darren Howard. I mean, he was my roommate in college. So we're watching the game and I literally and I just said, Sky, he's going to end up breaking your school record in sacks in this game. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like, and it was, you saw him getting off of double teams. And that was the thing is that he got off of, there was one time they chipped, he just spun back inside. Made a sack. I'm like, this kid is playing at a level right now and doing things that you don't see. I mean, the elite pass rushers in college football are doing. His name has got to be on that list right now. Has to be on that list because it wasn't just, oh, okay. He's out there running. It's not what was happening, Tim. He wasn't just running around somebody. He was making moves up and under, spin moves. He was doing it all with extreme effort. I, and like I said, I was just teasing Darren. I'm like, man, he's going to break your, your all-time sack record just in this game. And Darren's upset with me. He's like, oh, blah, blah. And, I'm like, and then he turns it on, and he's like, man, he's got, he's got a lot going on. I'm like, yes, he does. I go, this kid, they can't block him. They literally – Cannot block him. It was great, man. And it's like I said, he has got a lot going for him. Uh, teams are going to have to account for him. And uh, the one thing is, is that he's humble. You know, all of his teammates were giving him all the praise in the world. And hey, he was soaking it up. But you're supposed to soak it up. Oh, yeah, you're a college kid. It is what it is. You're supposed to do that. But he wasn't out there for being braggadocious. His teammates were doing that to him, and that's what. That's how you know kid is really humble and he allowed his team to celebrate him and him not doing it on his own it's just it, it, i loved it i loved every second of it and i'm telling you if you know if you don't sit if you don't account for this kid it's going to be a problem it just is yeah it really is and you're right uh he is one of my favorite kids on the team he is uh from day one when we started dealing with him he's humble he's very intelligent yes. he's just I, I, for lack of a better word, he's just a sweet young man. He's a very kind-hearted person. So to see the good things happen for him is really good. And I just want to put this out there. Uh, if his parents don't want him, he can be Felix Anudike Uzama Fitzgerald. I'll just adopt him. Right I'll just adopt him. <laughs> he's, he's something special. Is on and off the field. And what's funny about you bringing Darren into this conversation is a couple of years ago, we had former players go through uh, different guys in recruiting class, in the recruiting class for K-State and, you know, break them down. And he looked at Nate Matlack because Nate's high school video reminded me of little skinny Darren Howard when he All arrived right. at K-State. And Nate's kind of going through the same thing. Got to get weight on, got to get better. He's beginning to play now as a redshirt freshman. He has explosive abilities at 1D in spot. But let's not forget that um, they've got a kid that is injured right now. 
And, you know, I mean, yes. they've got more guys. So yes. when they get Khalid Duke back, who was supposed to be their, their big pass rusher, I can't imagine right. where they're going to be. And, oh, yeah, Bronson Boom Massey, who was the number two pass rusher coming into the season, uh, came back for this game and maybe was able to give Felix a little rest here and there and get him all fresh. It was absolutely incredible to watch, and I don't think this is a one-game thing. I just don't. No. This wasn't a bad matchup for TCU. This is what happened at Tech. Apparently skyrocketed his confidence. And, yes. Um, it, almost like a kid who can shoot the ball but doesn't want to shoot the ball and finally had really good things happen to him. And he's going to take a shot now every time he can. But he's what, what amazes me about him, Brian, and you could appreciate this as a former offensive lineman, he's not pinning his ears back on every play. He's nope. – He's playing the run really well. He's playing yep. situational football. He's not a passing down rush defensive end. He's an every down defensive end, and that's what that's makes right. him absolutely incredible. That's right. You, you could see it. And, again, that's kind of what I was mentioning, you know, when he's doing spin moves. It's like, okay, I'm starting out. I'm playing the run. Oh, you're passing. I need to spin back inside. It was just, it was that type of stuff and just giving the effort because, you know, half a defense is effort because you're fighting off somebody and you're chasing, you're always chasing on defense. And so it was just literally the effort that I saw him playing against the run. I, I, I mean, he's a complete defensive end. He's just a complete defensive end. Um, at the sky's the limit, but you know what? Getting back to his confidence level, look, I played college football. If you do a segment on ESPN, literally about me, and I got a former NFL player that can actually complete my full name and says it correctly and gives me, that's the, I mean, I have no choice but to have confidence. And that's what I love. It's just, you you get that to happen to you and Katie Bar the door. Who knows what happens to his career from there? Who knows? Uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. All with the backdrop of this, he was lightly recruited. In fact, Correct. he was a blue shirt coming into Kansas State. He ended up getting a scholarship at the start of the semester. Um, I'm not sure what the circumstances were, but he ended up on the team full ride from the very get-go. But he truly was kind of a recruiting afterthought. Let's find a place for this kid. Maybe he will develop. And by God, this is this wasn't a three-year project. They started seeing this immediately from him, but he had to get bigger and stronger. That's the other thing people need to understand about Felix. He is truly a sophomore in college. He's not a right. man child that, you know, just grew up big. He I think it was Nate Madlock said he played against him in high school and said he wasn't big at all. I mean, he wasn't right. intimidating, but he keeps growing. He keeps filling out. And you could see him when he, from when he came in this year that he was bigger. But Mr. Hanley, he's got a lot of room to put on more mass. Good mass. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. A ton. It's a terrifying. ton of room. Yes. Yes. I mean, he's got a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to just build muscle. Because if you look at him, he's bigger. But not just this muscle-bound person. Right. Well, he's probably got room for a minimum 20 to 25 more pounds of muscle that he can throw on, drop a little bit more of the baby fat or whatever you want to call it, and he's a man-child out there. I just The sky's the limit. It really, really is because he understands football, Tim. That's the thing. When you understand how to play football, and that's first, and then you grow into your body, that's literally what you want. You want somebody to understand it, that, hey, he's just little, but he knows how to play. Well, he knows how to play, and now he's getting bigger, starting to reap the rewards, and so is K-State. It's, it's absolutely a blast to watch him play. It's great to talk to him afterwards, and um, to see how he handles it. His, his buddy, his roommate, Deuce Vaughn, was uh, posing as a reporter last night, asking him questions, uh, which was very entertaining. I, now I'm on the uh, I'm on the bandwagon to get him an NIL deal with Crocs. Apparently, for some reason, Brian Hanley, that I can't explain, Crocs are really popular with this football team. In fact, I'm told uh. he doesn't even have the biggest collection of Crocs. That probably goes to T. Denson on the team that has more Crocs, uh, and he would wear them into 
post game or whenever, but now he's been instructed he has to wear university supplied things to post game. So he was in uh, Nike slides last night, and they looked comfortable. They looked great, but they didn't make the fashion statement that the Crocs do. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> you got to get him in NIL. We just do. Yes. It, it's it's uh, it it will be a Croc if we can't. There we go. <laughs> That's awesome. Brian, hold on one second. Let's take a little break right here on the Powercat Post Game Review Podcast brought to you by Caddyshack Golf. GoPowerCat.com's Powercat Podcast continues after this short break. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Welcome back to the Power Cat Podcast. Now, let's return to the GPC Studios. Welcome back to the PowerCat Post Game Review Podcast. Tim Fitzgerald, publisher of GoPowerCat.com, and our football analyst at GPC, Mr. Brian Hanley from down in Texas, is joining us as we take you through the ups and downs, mostly ups, of Kansas State's 31 to 12 victory over TCU on Saturday at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And we are sponsored by Caddy Shack Golf. For K Staters, by K Staters, jackets, hats, polos, t shirts, golf accessories, Caddy Shack Golf. Caddy with two T's. Visit CaddyShackGolf.com. Use code GPC for free shipping on your next order. Let's move on to other details now. Um, Skyler Thompson didn't put up the best numbers that he has since coming back. Let me find it here. Sky was 13 to 21, 242 with that pick. Uh, uh, one interception, two sacks, had the great 73-yard uh, pass to Daniel Imader Bebe. What is it with the names on this team? Why do I have to know how to say these things? Um, but I thought Skyler was just really rock solid. He pulled the down the ball yeah. down and ran for 26 yards on one play to pick up a first down. He didn't look himself, but he he knew how to get to the first down, broke a tackle, got past there, and, and uh, looked really good in the process. But I also feel like he has just grown immensely as a leader. You don't see the bad body language. You don't see the bad habits. He's a totally different dude since coming back from this injury. Yes, he is. He has He played a great game yesterday, I thought. The one pick, I mean, it is what it is. But I think he's just come back. I think his leadership and the confidence level that the guys have. Look, everybody loves all our teammates. We all do. Having said that, we also, as football players, understand the guys that can help us win versus someone else. I mean, that's just football. It's not bad mouth at somebody. It's just football. And he just, when he's out there, the confidence level, and you can see it, is is just at an all-time high with everyone else that's around him. He just makes everybody else better, number one, by being out there getting us where we need to be, getting in the right place, getting the ball where it needs to get to, you know, and just being that steady rock solid presence is, is something that the offense needs, man. And he, he's doing it. He's playing some of his best football right now, you know, and the season's not over. He's got a lot more to go, 
We've got a long way to go with this thing. So the more and more that he keeps getting, I mean, he keeps getting better, I think, because he's playing better. And the, the better that he plays, the better that this team is going to be. Uh, the biggest relief I have about this team is the fact we've seen the re- the receiving core relax. They're, Correct. They don't. They're not pressing now, and they're on the same page with their quarterback. The numbers have gone way up over the last three games. It's been impressive to watch. Malik Knowles had four catches for 58 yards. Um, Amata Bebe had two for 90. Deuce Vaughn two for 49. Sammy Wheeler a couple for 19. W- what was fascinating to me about this game, though, was by the end of the game. They were out of receivers uh, for the most part. We saw Howell get kicked right. out, and and both Knowles and uh, Brooks ended up with some minor injuries that coach didn't really know anything about after the game. I think they're going to be fine, but those are three of the top four or five guys on the team, and Correct. all of a sudden um, you've got a bunch of guys out there that uh, aren't going to scare many defenses. We'll just put it that way. They they can't get Correct. deep. They're more possession guys, and they did a good job, but. I loved it, the fact that K-State said, okay, we're going to throw the ball to these guys now. And they just kept yeah. playing their offense. And, and I think that was a real sign of confidence in the receiving core as a whole, not just a couple guys. Correct. I thought the receiving core played a, another solid game. The one thing that I think that we're going to have to take more advantage of, and I, you saw it in the game with a long touchdown pass, the tight end position it, it, these teams are playing these two deep against us in passing situation. These seam routes and these tight ends are literally wide open, and you just got to throw them the football. So, and, and and they have to catch it. You know, it's one thing you throw them the football; they also have to catch it. So, and I, I just the wide receiver and the, obviously the tight ends. You want to include those. I think they again another solid performance. Got to keep getting better. Don't want to sit on our laurels, um, but I, I just think that they are just playing at a level right now. It, again, confidence because I think they know. Hey, if I run my route, the ball is going to be where it needs to be. Versus, hey, I run my route and I have to wait until he sees me, and then going to throw me the ball. And by that time, I'm covered. And I'm having to make this. I mean, it basically turns into a fifty-fifty ball. Right. And I th- and receivers get nervous, especially young, inexperienced receivers. They get nervous when it, it when you know things like that. But when you're able to just run your route freely and know that, hey, if I run it. And I'm open. The ball is going to be there when I'm open. I think that helps receivers understand and it helps their confidence level a ton. Well, I don't expect them to show a ton of new stuff against KU, if anything at all. I think they're going to be fairly generic lineup and try to beat KU without putting more stuff on film. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, This is a mismatch. KU kind of had its big moment and playing three quarters against Oklahoma and then just absolutely got blasted by Oklahoma State on Saturday. Yep. I think they ended up with like 120 yards of offense. It was just dreadful. Uh, but I would love if over the course of those last three games plus the bowl game, if Kansas State didn't give Daniel Bebe the Travis Kelsey treatment and say, hey, yeah. we're going to throw the ball to you five, six, seven times. If they don't want to cover you eight, nine, ten, eleven times, account for that tight end because just throwing it to him once in a while is a changeup. Making them account for him on every pass pattern completely collapses how a secondary wants to operate against K-State. Yeah, you're exactly right. And he's open too, Tim. He's open. I think they got to throw him the ball because it's not. It's his athleticism. I know it's his athleticism. He can catch the football and then do something with it. I I just think we got to incorporate him more. And just like you said, Throw it to him, seven, eight, because he's going to catch it. I know he's got some drops. I get that. But he's going to catch the football, and then he's going to do something else with it. He's going to make a guy miss. He's going to break a tackle or two. Just get the football in his hands. I believe it is an untapped weapon. And kind of what you said, they don't necessarily need to do that against KU. But, you know, down the road, they're going to need it. And I I think he's going to be a huge, or, or can be. I don't know that he's going to be, but I think he can be a huge target and a huge asset for what we're trying to do because it looks like the guys on the outside are getting better. They're getting better. And we know we can run the football. And if you have a tight end that you can throw the ball down the middle when they decide that they want to do, okay, well, we're going to just do a one high safety. Okay, well, if you're going to do that, then we're going to exploit you. If you want to run a cover three or just have one high safety or even two high safeties to play cover two, 
that middle of the field is going to be open and we can hit it. I just think that has to be more of the offense for us to, to exploit down the road. Absolutely. I I just think he brings so much to this offense. I really like K-State's tight end. Sammy Wheeler has some of that in mm-hmm. it too. Uh, I'd like to see them get him a little more involved downfield. And Nick Leonard's is so valuable in the run game and, you know, that short passing game. He just blocks so incredibly well. Deuce Vaughn ended up with 20 carries, 109 yards, that long run of 42 in which he was untouched. It almost looked identical to the play I was State ran to start the game with Brees Hall. It I I'd have to go back and look at that, but the way it was blocked and the way they collapsed the entire side of the TCU defense looked just like what happened to K State. It was impressive, and Deuce was gone. Uh, Joe Irvin didn't play. He got dinged up in the previous game and um, at Tech and. Missed some practice, probably could have gone, but just wasn't worth risking him once it got going with it. And uh, But, man, you add in the receivers, a tight end, and Deuce and Skyler getting back into the running game. This offense all of a sudden goes from fairly, fairly generic to having the capability of putting up some points if their offensive coordinator will trust him. But I love Messingham. I think he's a wonderful guy, and I know he's a great coach. But I, I think he just chokes in the third quarter. He's got to yeah. open this thing up. And I almost, if I'm Chris Kleiman, I almost want to have him have Messingham script the third quarter. Now, maybe you scrap it. Maybe you get into the game and you realize, well, this doesn't work. But I would almost like him to run a script to open the third quarter to try to get the team going again because they've got to solve this. They can't beat West Virginia, Baylor, and Texas with with three quarters of play. They did it yesterday with TCU, literally. I mean, they would have had almost 500 yards of offense if they'd played all four quarters. But uh, they've got to get this figured out and get it figured out soon. And I don't get it because they've got the weapons to do it. I mean, they got to do something about the third quarter because just what you said, you can't – I mean, you basically it was a lost quarter. I mean, we did nothing and didn't try to do anything. Yeah. I mean, literally didn't try to do anything. And maybe – I don't know. I don't know. But you're right. We're not going to beat those teams because, again, those are good football teams. It's going to take four quarters of offense to be able to beat them, four productive quarters of offense to beat them. And this third quarter thing, just, you know, right out of the gates, uh, we just got to – just got to be more aggressive. I think that's what it is, Tim. We're just not aggressive. Is that we come out vanilla, run, run, okay, and if we have to throw it, we'll throw it. Well, you know what? Maybe throw it on first down. Maybe throw it in and just be more aggressive. I think that's what it is. I think yesterday, I'm not going to beat up on them too much because I think yesterday, I think they thought we got this one in the bag. They can't do anything on offense. Push the, the gas pedal a little bit, we will. Yep. But I, I think that's kind of what yesterday was. But you don't want to get into that mold. I mean, you definitely don't want to get into that because, you know, like you said, we're going to need more offense down the road. I am just intrigued by how the season's playing out. They had the three games in non-conference, which really kind of built the foundation for the team, built some confidence. You open up Big 12 season with three incredibly tough opponents, maybe three of the four best teams if you throw Baylor in there. I don't know what to do with Texas, to be honest. Um, And they didn't rise to that challenge, but... You know, those are good teams. K-State just wasn't there yet. Now they've moved yeah. into three games that they can manage and win. As it turns out, Tech was was reeling. They fired their coach. I think TCU, unfortunately, is going to fire their coach. At Kansas, at Kansas, they're not going to fire their coach, but uh, he will be eventually. Um, right. And then and once you get past Kansas, and I expect K-State to win, get to 6-3, and three, get bull eligible, blah, 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 you go into the next phase the really comparable teams, the teams that are also fighting with you to be in that fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh slots in this conference. That this is this is so much fun because coming down the stretch, Brian Hanley, Kansas State's going to play West Virginia and Baylor and Manhattan and go to Texas, and these are the most like opponents as the season's played out that they have on their schedule, and they could end up six and six and kind of be disappointing, or they could end up with eight, nine wins and know that they really accomplished something by finishing strong. This team's got a lot on the table, doesn't it? A ton on the table, a ton on the table. And it starts with just putting your foot down this week coming up and early and just squash them early and get it over with. Don't even let them have any room to breathe. 
at all and get the game over with. And then you go into the next week. I just, these next three opponents, and again, I'm not just trying to bash KU, but I'm trying to bash KU. <laughs> um, the next three opponents are, are really it's just kind of what you said. They're like us. West Virginia and Baylor scare me more than Texas. Texas got good offense, but it, it, Texas is Texas. At K-State, I think, can go there and win. Even the next two, the Baylor and West Virginia games scare me. West Virginia, I didn't think they were going to have much this year, to be honest with you, Tim. They've got something. They have absolutely got something. And the last two weeks, I'm like, okay, well, I truly underestimated them, and it, but they didn't start out great. And so I think that's kind of what it is. Well, they've figured it out, and here they are. And, and Baylor, at the same time, I, I mean, I didn't think they were going to have much either. And again, here they are. And But I think it's something I, I just – you want to attest to where your program is? These – after KU, these next three games are literally what it is. Is you want to find out where you're at, this is where we're at. And we got a lot in front of us. Um, and I think it's a, a benchmark to see exactly – where K State as a football program stands, because and, and you're right, it would be disappointing if we go six and six. But I, I, you know what, put the pressure on because this is the barometer and this is where we want to be. If we're trying to go to where we're trying to go as a program, let's see where we're at. And I think the those three games are going to tell us. And let's be honest, Kansas State and Chris Kleiman. 0-6 against those three opponents so far. That's right. West Virginia, Baylor, and Texas, he has not beaten any of them. And we'll see if he can get back on top of some of those programs for the program because I think K-State fans would regard them, this program as being above those three in most seasons. It just is. But uh, Neil Brown's doing a great job. I can't explain how the hell they lost to Tech in Morgantown. I, I can't wrap my mind around that. You, you think K-State fans are upset about the nature of some of their losses? Those three losses are against good teams. They lost to Texas Tech at home. Yes. And that that just stinks. You look at <laughs> Baylor, uh, they have been very surprising. I think they've had some good fortune on how the schedule's fallen, getting a couple teams to come to Waco that they really needed to beat. Now K-State gets in turn to have them in Waco. And by the time K-State goes to Texas on that Friday after Thanksgiving, that is a Friday game, folks, who knows what will be left of those Longhorns because they're not playing full uh, games now. I can't imagine no. once they lose their confidence or belief in Sark how they're yeah. going to be then. Or they could just come out and wail on K-State. I don't know. They're just, they're just so talented. I can't explain anything they're doing. Well, I mean, Texas, they're talented, but it's kind of what you said. Last year was an anomaly. Last year, you know, they came and they beat us up, and they did. But we were a broken football team at that point. I mean, we just were. We won't be that way. It's not the same scenario. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying injuries and stuff can't happen, and God forbid, let's hope they don't. But what I'm saying is it was more than that for K-State. It was just, we were just emotionally and physically not the same. Right. It, Texas is going to be in that same boat because if you look at these games, I mean, they can't finish. They literally can't finish football games. Well, if you can't finish a football game now, by then they're, they're going to have quit because they'll have nothing to play for. At least last year they were trying to save their coach. Well, they're not going to fire their coach after this year. They'll, they'll be finished by that time. But let's get to that point right. first. Let's get to that point, you know, and, and have that happen because West Virginia – tough. Baylor, tough. I mean, those are tough physical football teams. Yeah, Texas runs the ball, but how tough and physical are they really? You know, if you look at it, are they really that tough and physical of a football team other than having a great running back? I don't know. We'll find out. But the other two teams, I believe, are really physically tough and it's just going to take an all-out four-quarter effort to beat them. And again, what you said, we have it since Coach has been here, but you know what? This is where we want to be. Those are the programs that that we measure ourselves by, and if we think that we're better than them, then it's time to show that we're better than them because thinking it and showing it are two totally different things. Amen, brother. Amen. Kansas State beats TCU 31-12 to on Saturday at Bill Snyder Family Stadium, lifting the Cats to 5-3. and three. Overall on the season, 2-3 and three in Big 12 play, heading into an 11 a.m. game. It was announced Saturday night. The game will be at 11 in Lawrence on Saturday on FS1. No Tim Brando on the call, folks. He's going Ooh. to another game. 
So just Ooh. relax. He's not going to say, have to try to say Felix and you Duque Ozama at any point or Daniel Amaterbebe because oh. he probably would have problems with Skylar Thompson's name. Oh my goodness. But it's, then, you know, yeah, it's, oh. uh, I know it's exhausting. I, you know, I like all announcers. I'm, I'm never the guy that's going to bash announcers, but Tim, sometimes it's just time to quit. Sometimes he's been doing it for a long, long time. You know what? And sometimes it's just time to just let it go. Hey, just let it go. Look, <laughs> we all make mistakes. We all screw things up. We all get we would get calls wrong if we we're doing a game. We'd probably mispronounce a name, but it is clear to me that he and his partner Spencer Tillman are no longer preparing for broadcasts. No, I mean that's the thing. What it is? They're not even preparing. And Spencer Tillman used to really be good. Yep, he was. He was good. And I think since I think he what he takes now as a demotion, I think now he's just like you know what I'm just going to go through the motions and just whatever. Right. And it's I'm glad they're not on our call. I am too. I am too. <laughs> Brian, thank you very much. K State continues to win now that they're uh, yep. into the middle portion of their schedule and things are really looking up for the Cats. Absolutely. Love it. Great win. Great overall team win. Sets us up for so much down the, in the future here and uh, couldn't be more excited and looking forward to, to mashing on these KU people. You got it. You got it. That is the Power Cat Post Game Review Podcast brought to you by Caddy Shack Golf. Join us next week, middle of next week, when we have our preview podcast with Brian and Ryan Wallace and Ryan Gilbert as we get you ready for the Sunflower Showdown. Kansas State visits Lawrence on Saturday at 11 a.m. next week. It should be a very entertaining day if you are a K-State fan. We will talk to you next week. Make sure you tune in for all of our PowerCat podcasts brought to you by GoPowerCat.com. Thank you for listening to the PowerCat podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.